you guys remember Brenton Powers? Woohoo! Evangelist extraordinaire right here. He, you'll always catch him over at uh, uh, the wharf or, or someplace talking about Jesus. You've got to love a man that is just crazy for Jesus. And so he, he went and uh, he's learned some new techniques of sharing the gospel. And uh, he's going to share with us a little bit what the Lord's put in his heart. Brenton, tell us what God's doing. All right. Well, the Lord has assigned us on another mission field. And it's one of the most unchurched mission fields in the entire USA. It's right here. Between Carmel and San Francisco. The need is great. That's what I'm trying to start with. How shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach unless they're sent? So we need, I'm so glad to see this church once again, worshiping God, doing it outdoors. Kudos to you guys. Praise God. Because I believe God has allowed this pandemic so that the church would bring the gospel out of the four walls where it belongs in the world. So that's what God's called me to do. And I'm, a, I'm working with an organization called Open Air Campaigners. And their, their primary tool for evangelism for the last 100 years, it started in 1892 in Australia, is to use a sketchboard. So it's an old thing, but it's also a novel thing because not many people are out painting in public. Well, maybe here in Carmel or... Santa Cruz or down by the wharf, you might see some street artists, but I was actually trained as an artist. Maybe you didn't know that. I went to MPC and took full-time art classes because I thought I was going to be an artist. I wanted to use art for the Lord, but all my teachers were secular, and so they discouraged me by interpreting anything I painted in their own secular worldview. So I decided to go to Bible college and know how to use the word. But, you know, God can redeem art. God can use visual aids. And he can use your life as a light to the world. So what I've tried to do is come up with some sketches. This is my own design. And I used it in Santa Cruz a couple days ago. So it's partially completed. But we complete the uh, presentation. And people like to watch. So here's what we do. I'm going to demonstrate. And uh, let me catch my breath. This is so exciting. So good to see all of you. I love you guys so much. I've missed you. Love you, Brent. Yes, we were a part of this church for two years after we moved back from Europe. And I really miss the worship team and the, the pastor. I call Dave every few months we, and we catch up. So anyway, let me share the gospel. And if there's, if there's anyone here who's not a believer, this is the gospel. This is the good news of how you can be saved and become a Christian. But let me tell you, the gospel is for believers too. So, what does the word gospel mean? Good news. Good news. So, we, I, normally I just start with a blank color right here. And I say I can make green letters or red letters appear with a black paintbrush. And I fill in these lines real quick, a couple of dots, a couple of lines. Suddenly the word appears. Um, I, I don't have that for you right now. But let's do a little demonstration right here. So let's say we have on the top, we have, let's see how many letters I got to count the word that I'm intending. Okay, so there's five letters, sort of like Wheel of Fortune. Name a letter. A, a no. E, e. e, do I hear an E? Okay, E for 500. Okay, name another letter. L. A. L. Another letter. B. B. Ooh, B, you get a lot of money for that one. Amen. Okay, and then, so with a couple of dabs, usually I do it a little neater. <laughs> I'm trying, I'm learning. We have the Bible story. Can I share a Bible story with you? Yeah. Okay, so in order to understand the good news, I need to explain the bad news, right? A solution isn't appreciated unless you understand the problem. And you can't appreciate how great the solution is until you understand how great the problem is. So what is the problem? 
The problem is like this dark background behind this diamond. The reason why they put diamonds out on black felt is because it, by contrast, you see how glorious the diamond is when the light is absorbed in the dark background. And every little nuance, every manifold little detail you can see under the light in contrast to that dark background. And it's the same with the gospel. The dark background started with creation, which was good, but something went wrong. And here's where I'll write in the word sin. You guys know that our problem is sin. What is sin? It's good to define it. For children, I like to say it's stinky inner nastiness. S-I-N. And we all have it. According to the Bible, sin is the breaking of God's law. So I have two tablets of the Ten Commandments here. The first half, Jesus summarized as being the most important commandment, and that is to love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And the second is like it, and it's to love your neighbor as yourself. So the summary of the law is love. So I've made it a heart shape. But there's a line down the middle because it's broken. We've all broken the law. Have you ever lied? Have you ever stolen? Jesus said if you look at someone with lust, you've committed adultery in your heart. If you're angry without cause, or you call your brother an idiot, you're a murderer in your heart. John said, whoever hates his brother is a murderer at heart. And so the, the uh, rich young ruler, he came to Jesus and said, what, what good thing must I do to enter the kingdom of heaven, to, to have eternal life? And Jesus said, you know the commandments, honor your father and mother. And he went through the second tablet of the law, which was supposed to be about loving your neighbor as you loved yourself. He said, I've done all these things for my youth. Unlikely, but that's what he was, he was trying to be good enough to earn eternal life. But he realized something was lacking. And Jesus said, you're lacking one thing. Go sell everything you have and give to the poor. This isn't a command to everybody that you have to sell all your possessions to go to heaven. What Jesus was doing is he was putting his finger on the law that he was breaking. He didn't love God more than he loved his wealth. He was breaking the first tablet of the law, to love God more than anything, to have no idols, to have no other God before you. Jesus says you can't serve both God and money. And he went away sad. He had a broken heart. He had broken God's law, and he was not good enough to go to heaven. That's the bad news. But that's true for all of us. We've all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God, and that's why this, this gift is so glorious, because the gift of God is this. In contrast to death is eternal life. The gift of God is eternal life through whom, the Bible says, through Jesus Christ. So in order to cross from death to life, you need to go through Jesus, through the cross. Because Jesus took the punishment that, our, that the law required for our sins. We broke God's law, but Jesus paid our fine in his life's blood. Now, I usually have different colors up here, but I, we try to pre-paint things so that we can engage in the audience. But at this point, I love to do this. The Bible says, apart from the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sins. So Jesus, he shed his blood for us because he loves us. Now, the bad news is we did not love him, but he first loved us, and that's what makes us want to love him. You see, when you come to God through Jesus, who is the way, the truth, and the life, you will receive a new heart. The Bible calls it being born again. 
Jeremiah says, this is the new covenant. The old covenant written on tablets of stone we couldn't keep. The new covenant promises that God will give us a heart of flesh and he will cause us to walk after his ways and to, to desire what he wants. And that's a miracle called regeneration. So you must be born again, Jesus said. So what must we do to be born again? How do we cross over from death to life? Ladies and gentlemen, I set before you life and death. Choose life. You have a choice. There is a way. Jesus is the way. But how do we come to him? The Bible tells us two things to do. One is turn to God. And sometimes I'll write the word turn here. So I won't do it right now. But turn or repent is what Jesus said. Go preach the gospel. Go preach repentance to all the nations. And Jesus himself modeled it. He said the kingdom of God is at, is, is at hand. I am the king. And on the cross it, it said here's Jesus, king of the Jews. But he's not only the king of the Jews, but the king of kings and lord of lords. So we need to repent and believe the gospel. Oh, on this side, sometimes I write the word trust, just to keep it simple. This is a sign for repentance. If anyone's ever prayed, God, give me a sign. Here it is. Repent and believe or trust in Jesus. And you will receive a new heart, a new life, and peace with God. That's the good news. So let me give you a scripture verse. Everyone should memorize it. It used to be the favorite Bible verse of America until uh, they discovered Matthew 7, 1, which says, Judge not, lest you be judged. But John 3, 16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, so that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but shall have everlasting life. So can you see, just like the diamond sparkles in all of its glory when in contrast to the dark background, that the love and the truth and the light of Jesus and the life that he offers to us for free as a gift is glorious in contrast to the sin that we've committed against him and the death that we deserve. In fact, this guy over here, his name's Bob, so say hi, Bob. And now say bye, Bob. Because when Bob dies, if he dies without Christ, he will not go to heaven. He will go, unfortunately, to the other place. Hell. And that's why this is so important to tell people. Jesus said, broad is the path that leads to destruction, and many are on that path. But narrow is the path that leads to life. Jesus is the one way. How shall they believe on him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? Jesus said, go preach to every creation, creation, every person, not just in the four walls of the church but out in your community, like you're doing. But you can also serve as a sender. Not everyone is an evangelist. I thank God that he's given me the gifts and, and skills to paint and present the gospel and experience. And we also help e equip other Christians. You don't have to be an evangelist to preach the gospel. Did you know that? Paul told Pastor Timothy, do the work of an evangelist. Timothy was shy. He could have said, oh, I don't have the gift of evangelism. That doesn't matter. Jesus told all the disciples, go preach the gospel. So you can do it. You can learn how to share like this. And if you'd like some training, maybe you could even learn how to paint. I could give some free classes on how to paint. I have different illustrations. But you can also serve as a sender. And uh, so Pastor Dave will talk about that. But I want to ask for your prayer, because when you pray for missionaries, you pray for evangelists, you're engaging in frontline ministry work. It's a spiritual battle we're in, and we need God to regenerate hearts and give eternal life to people 
but how are they going to hear unless there's a preacher? And so we go to the Monterey Wharf, Carmel Beach, Santa Cruz Beach Boardwalk, Pacific Avenue in Santa Cruz. It was there. Uh, I started this painting there Friday. And you can watch me present the gospel. I'm also an audiovisual technician. You can subscribe to Dwell on Truth on your uh, Facebook page. Um, and Dwell on Truth is where I will post live presentations and some pre-recorded presentations. I hope to be able to reach San Jose and San Francisco, um, but we need support in order to do that. Um, because that's the, the number one most unchurched area between San Francisco down to San Jose. But for now, I'm starting here, starting in my Jerusalem. So thank you so much for allowing me to present the gospel to you. And let me urge you, if you haven't yet turned and trusted in Christ, that now is the time. Turn and trust. You could do it right where you're seated or standing, or you can come up after the service. I'd love to pray with you. Pastor Dave would love to pray with you to receive Christ as Lord and Savior. Don't let this opportunity go by. If you haven't yet done it, do it today. Get right with God. Thank you so much. Praise the Lord. Wasn't that great? Brenton has got some uh, flyer. I think he's got some photos. You can put it by your computer. You can be praying for him. The greatest thing that Brenton needs is, is prayer more than anything else. He would love to have some support. If God puts on your heart to, to support him financially, that's fantastic. Um, but prayer is everything. The word says that no man comes to Jesus unless the Father draws him. And so we pray for Brenton. We pray for our community. And, you know, we pray for you guys that the Lord would use you to, to reach the community. Amen? Praise Amen. the Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Brenton. Father, we want to pray for Brenton. We would ask that you would just use him, use his family uh, uh, to reach the unreachable, to touch those who have not heard. Lord, I just thank you for just the talent that you've given this man, whether it's leading worship or teaching your word or using uh, art. You've obviously placed your hand upon him, and we would ask that you would just use him to bring many people for your kingdom. We thank you for the fellowship that we have with him. We thank you for his family. We ask that for provision for the kids and for Lena and just all that you're doing, Lord. We simply trust you. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise the Lord. Put your hands together for Brenton Bowers. And put your hands together for Jesus Christ, the King of glory. Hallelujah. All right. All right.